Hi, thanks for stopping by Tony's Cool Tools. Today in central Wisconsin, we have a balmy 13 degrees. However, I got tired making videos inside the warm, toasty outbuilding, and I figured I'd stray outside and do a video for you guys. Today, I wanted to discuss a little bit about UTVs and ATVs. I started out several years ago, and I bought a Honda Rubicon. And that thing is a workhorse, and it's absolutely awesome. And for the small trails that I have in the woods, I use a three-wheel big red Honda. And between those two, I got most of my work done. And then I bought the Easton made 1222, weighing in at 21 or 2200 pounds. I was really stressing that Rubicon out with that much weight. So I decided to look at UTVs. So in 2019, I started my search on a UTV and looked at multiple different brands. I kind of narrowed it down to three brands. As you know, there was a theme, Honda ATV, Honda three-wheeler. So my UTV of choice was Honda. But I looked at Honda, Polaris, and Kubota. And as you can see, I wound up with a Kubota. And I'm going to tell you why. And why a diesel? Now, I purchased this in January of 2020 just prior to COVID, and fortunately, the dealer did have some UTVs on hand. I chose the Kubota X900, and the three reasons I went with it were reliability, strength, and longevity. These diesel engines run forever, and everything on this thing is heavy duty, as you'll see shortly. I did not buy this Kubota to go leisure riding or trail riding, or go to Moab and climb the hill. Although it has enough torque to probably go up those vertical hills. I bought it as a workhorse. I wanted something I could load the heck out of and not worry about it breaking within a short period of time. And as you can see, I went with an open station versus a cab style. The number of times that I have to use a cab for snow removal is minimal, and the cost is quite high, so I figured I'm constantly getting in and out of this thing, and having a door might hinder me, just like on my tractor. So I decided to stay with the open station. Maybe as I'll get older, I'll turn this in and get a cab model. Time will tell. Now let's go through some of the specs on this UTV. The Kubota 900 is a three-cylinder liquid-cooled overhead cam valve diesel engine. And what that means, is it can deliver 21.6 horsepower. And I'll tell you, I haven't had many things bog this engine down. And it has a hydrostatic two-speed transmission. Low, medium, neutral, and reverse. And it has an inline shifter as opposed to the old days where you had the H or the L shifting. So it's nice. All you do is go up and go down. Real simple. Now here's the one thing. As I said, I didn't buy this for speed. The maximum speed on this in high is 25 miles per hour. So yeah, granny could beat you. But she surely couldn't out pull you, I'll tell you. Now what this UTV lacks in speed, it gains in torque. You have 40 foot pounds of torque on this thing. And I'll tell you, like I said, you could probably climb the hills at Moab. The nice thing about the Kubota 900 also is it has power steering. For those of you who drive a UTV, you know how important it is. My son-in-law and his dad have a Cub Cadet, about the same size as this in a gas model, and we use it for mowing fields with a DR brush mower behind. And without power steering, it is a bear to turn that thing and to work in tight quarters. That's why this power steering is so beneficial. Now let's check out some of the specs on this machine. Let's start from the front here. Awesome headlights. Unlike some of the other UTVs I see, these are extremely bright. And naturally, you can change the inside beam to halogen and even get more light. And it has an extremely heavy-duty brush guard. Well, let's check out what's underneath the hood here. As you can see, super roomy. Easy to get at your air filter, your radiator, and your hydraulic brake cylinder. Now, it does have independent dual A-arm suspension, as you can see here. And the shocks are preloaded and adjustable. And it does have a wet disc brake system. When I purchased the UTV, they had three options for tires. A four-ply turf tire, 
a six ply ATV tire and a six ply heavy duty job site tire. Now the job site tire is awesome on asphalt and concrete and hard surfaces and it's also good on gravel but I opted on the ATV because I'm just driving on gravel and dirt and these dig in real good and they work great in the snow for me. Now as you can see I have a boss adapter here for a boss snow plow but when this wasn't here the really cool feature is that there is a two inch receiver in the front and that is super important for me because I shuttle a lot of my equipment. It's so much easier towing or shuttling forward than it is backing it up. At least that's what I find. And I know other UTVs might have this option as well. Now, when I did get the snow plow, I had to buy this additional two inch receiver so that it would work with all my equipment. And the nice thing about it is I use my six inch drop leg here. And the reason is if I were to use just a straight leg with a ball on it, it's so low that sometimes my trailers are going downward. And this way with having a six inch leg going upward, it's not as bad. Now the tow capacity on the front end here is 110 pounds on the tongue weight and 650 pounds on the rolling weight. So that's pretty decent. And I do move my trailers, both my small utility trailer and my car hauler with this and have no problems. And it is a pleasure to shuttle something like my trailer from the front, like I mentioned before. I'll show you a little tip here. Master Lock has a hitch pin that is super, super simple as opposed to using a R pin or a cotter pin on here. This one here is spring loaded. And this feature is so handy because all I have to do is push it in and pull the pin and that's it. I don't have to start looking for an R pin or losing one on the ground or when I'm freezing, my hands get cold. Super easy, pull and it comes apart. I'll have a link below with the information on how to get one of these if you're interested. Now the unit is 120.3 inches in length. It's 63.2 inches wide and 79 and a half inches to the top of the roll bar. The wheelbase is 80 and a half inches long and has a 13 inch diameter turning radius. And the ground clearance here is 10.4 inches and it comes in at a hefty 1,907 pounds. Pretty substantial, almost as heavy as my Easton made 1222 or the Axis. So as you can see, that's why I needed something heavy duty. Well, let's cover the dashboard and the instrument cluster. It does not come with mirrors, but I wouldn't own a vehicle without one. So I have both the side view mirrors and the back view mirror, which truly is a safety feature for me, being able to know what I'm backing into and what's behind me. It does come with two libation holders, one on each side. We have the light switch, the parking brake, and the tilt steering wheel adjustment right here. Kubota does leave some knockouts here if you wanted to put additional headlights or accessories. As I mentioned before, this is an inline shifter. Low, high, neutral, and reverse. Let's turn it on and I'll show you the instrument cluster. As you can see, it's a digital cluster. I have the four wheel engaged here. Parking brake is on. The unit has 275 miles on it. And similar to my Coyote, it does come with a very manly horn. It does have a 12 volt accessory plug right here. And it does come with a nice glove compartment here. It does come with split bucket seats, which is really nice. And there is under seat storage, as you can see here. By tilting the seat, there's plenty of storage in there for small items on this side. And on this side, all you do is flip the lower seat and there you go. And I keep small accessories like safety glasses and my controller for my snow plow. Each seat does come with seat belts. It does come standard with this headache cage right here. So nothing comes forward flying at you. Your two and four wheel drive lever is easily accessible from the driver's seat here. This is the differential lock right here for your rear end. 
all you do is press this down and unlike my tractor, when I push this all the way down, I can lock it in here. So the differential is locked permanently. And then when I'm ready, I just release that and it automatically takes it off. Makes it extremely easy when you get stuck so you don't have to keep your heel on the differential the whole time while using your accelerator. The fuel tank is on the passenger side, as you can see here, and is extremely easy to get at. And it holds approximately seven and a half gallons of diesel. By raising the dump bed, you get access to the engine compartment, which is extremely easy to work on, as you can see here. By checking your oil with the orange dipstick right there, or your filler valve right up here, Everything is easy and accessible on this engine. And when you're working on your engine compartment and the engine is shut off, this may bleed down and come off. So there is a safety latch here that you can put on and lock it so it won't come down. Let's talk about one of the assets of this UTV and that's this dump. When I looked at several of the other manufacturers, the dump box was plastic. And it was extremely flimsy, it seems like it wouldn't take long before it broke. This is a metal dump box, and it also comes with a spray bed liner. So there is not much chance of rust for a long, long time. Now the measurements on this is 40.5 on the length, 57.7 on the width, and 11.2 on the depth. And the bed height from the ground is 34.9 inches. Now get this, it'll hold 15.2 cubic feet of stuff, whatever you put in here. And that's making sure that it's level on top. But the huge upside is your payload, 1,664 pounds. That's a heck of a lot of stuff to carry. Well, let me show you how the dump works. And since it is hydraulic, we have to have the engine on. All you do is flip this lever here. And there you go. Though it does come with brake lights, they are very dinky and small. As an option, you can get a turn signal kit from Kubota. Similar to the front, this does have a two inch receiver here. And it also can handle up to 110 pounds of tongue weight or 1300 pounds of rolling weight. So that's a substantial amount. All right, now the pros and the cons. I've taken you through the whole UTV and let me give you some thoughts. Okay, let's go through the pros. Kubota is a proven design on these UTVs. They've been around for some time and the diesel engines are absolutely awesome. They're powerful, they got a tremendous amount of torque, and they're dependable. What more could you ask for? And unlike my tractor with the hydrostatic transmission, I can leave it in drive and get out of the tractor without it killing on me. There's no safety devices on that, which is kind of nice. Unless you're uphill or downhill, you don't want to do that. But other than that, it's really nice. You can just get out and walk away and the engine will be running and it won't be creeping forward. All right, now to the cons. First and foremost, it's slow. It only goes 25 miles an hour, but that's enough for me. I'd rather have the torque and the pulling power and the towing capacity than I would speed. I don't need to go 65 mile an hour anywhere on my property. The next complaint I hear, it's noisy. It's a diesel, it's gonna be noisy. I live with that and sometimes I wear headsets. It's not that objectionable. It's not as loud as my tractor is, that's for sure. There has been some complaints by some people about the tailgate. You need two hands to unlock it, as opposed to like your pickup truck where you just pull one lever and it opens both of them. That's a small one for me, but for some other people, it is a problem. But here is something that is an issue. If you have material in your dump box and the tailgate is down and more of the weight is on the back end of the box than the front end, when you shut the engine off, over time, the dump box will lift up and you'll find all the stuff on the ground. That has happened to me. 
there should be some kind of a lockout that when you turn the engine off, the hydraulics are locked in as well. But I can see similar to a tractor, if you leave the bucket in the up position and you shut it off over time, it'll creep all the way down. The hydraulic will drop down. And if you have a load in it, it'll even go down faster. And though this isn't a con, when you do get a diesel product, there is a little bit of a learning curve if it's your first one. The other issue I've heard is it's sometimes hard to get in gear. And yes, I have had that problem. And with all the pros and cons I've just mentioned, would I buy a Kubota UTV again? Absolutely, especially the X series, the diesels. Being that it is a diesel, I look forward to years of good service with this and the longevity that I mentioned before. Well, I hope you found this video informative, and if so, would you please like, share, and subscribe? And give me a thumbs up as well. And remember, pass it forward, make the world a better place. And don't be a tool, watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, stay warm.